Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. Today, we are going to take a look at the new Argo Raft, which is uh, a pretty special ship. It's definitely one that I like. Now, Raft apparently stands for a uh, reinforced advanced freight transport. As we know, Argo tend to do this whole acronym kind of style. Uh, it's $125 war bond or $150 non war bond, which I was not expecting. That's a lot cheaper than I thought it would be. And I managed to pick one up by CCUing my um, Nomad for about 30 quid, which I was very happy with. Not that I don't. I like the Nomad. I've used it a lot, but it was always one of those ships that I thought would be uh, available there to, um, to change up when something came along. And with the price of this, I thought, now's the chance. Now, overall, it is 39 and a half meters in length, uh, 23 meters wide by 12 meters high. The Argo Mole, uh, for comparison, is about 45 meters long. So it's about five meters shorter than the Mole. It's about two meters less wide and about three meters like shorter as well. Now, it's only a crew of two. As you can see, there's the two seats in the cockpit. And this is for the pilot, which will sit here. You can see he's got, well, they've both got quite a lot of consoles to, to see there. Uh, but the second operator could be maybe for the tractor beam at the back. We'll talk a bit more about that. The uh, remote turret operator as well, or even just something like an engineer, for example. Now, it is a cargo transporter. And it uses three 32 SEU um, containers. So about 96, or not about, exactly 96 SEU in total. Now, the thing is with these containers, they are the same containers that you find at the cargo decks. They're also what the hull C and above use. As we know, the cargo refactor was something that's holding up the hull C. So this is one of the ways they're going to get around it, rather than the hull C having to render, what, 4,500 and something cargo uh, SEU boxes. It'll render the equivalent of these but in you know 32 seu standards so maybe a way to get this whole container gameplay cargo uh, container gameplay working um ready for i think 318 is when we are getting the cargo refactor which is also now when the hull c is technically slated to come hopefully it'll come in time uh, we will see now it has four VTOLs, which are these over here, these huge rotating thrusters. These are the main thrusters. Well, the VTOL thrusters, you've got your main thrusters here and your maneuvering thrusters located all throughout the ship. So it's got four VTOL thrusters, so capable of being able to take off, even if it's fully laden with the three full containers. Again, we'll talk more about the tractor beam operator, the container gameplay and that kind of stuff uh, in a second. It also has these four large landing legs which i really like how it creates that kind of bulldog look hang on we're looking at the back there that's why i was getting confused so it has this kind of quadruped animal like um appearance which looks nice it really suits the argo aesthetic with it being very industrial it looks kind of beastly a lot of headlights which i also like will I'll try and remember to turn them on when we're sat in the um, sat inside. One other feature that I really like is it's got a two meter diameter standard um, airlock, which is good for ship to ship and hopefully ship to station. I would oops, I would assume it's for both, but it does mention ship to ship. But yeah, this is you know that you've got the two by two circular diameter, which is enough to get an S uh, one standard cargo unit through. Or if you look at something like the Hammerhead, you've got the two by four more rectangular appearance. Can I reach it from here? I think I can. Yeah, there we go. So that'll allow you to attach to uh, other ships um, and eventually space stations as well. Very useful. Now let's get inside. You've got to be quite dangerous getting inside because at the moment, I'm sure it'll get fixed uh, pretty, pretty sharpish, albeit voting it. There should be doors here that open up you can't see it but there is a time delay to getting in getting onto the lift and also if you are slow with it you can fall through and clip through the the planet so you've got i tend to just oh jesus oh no oh this is going to be interesting 
Oh, wait, give me a second. <laughs> Let me try doing that. I might have been chatting too long there. There we go. So the doors are invisible. They do dis... You can't see them opening and closing. Um, but when they're closed, obviously you are stopped. You're blocked from getting in. And right down here, you will clip through. I've clipped through the planet multiple times trying to record this. I've Well, once. I've clipped through the... Um, let's start at the top. And I've clipped through a space station landing pad. It is most frustrating. It's taken about three days to record this video. That's an exaggeration. It wasn't three days. But I'm venting. Anyway, so this is the top deck, which is the engineering deck. Uh, it is where all the components are found. Once you're inside, you know, this whole clipping thing doesn't matter. You, you don't you don't fall through. So let's go to the front, and then we'll work our way back. This is where all of the components engineering section is. It's where you can access anything uh, component-wise, be it power plant, shield generators. There's also a ladder which goes from the top to the bottom. Now, let's start here. So this is the tractor beam station, which will allow you to move these on and off. I'm assuming there is also going to be some form of crane where these clamps... You, ca you can't use it yet. We don't have ship tractor beams yet. But I'm assuming there's going to be some form of maybe a crane operator here as well as a tractor beam. It does say it comes with a tractor beam. So I'm assuming you'll be able to maybe move these crates from one place to here and then maybe pick them up using the crane and you would start with i suppose the closest one here being number three pick it up drag it along they're on rails so hang on head tracking is being a bit annoying so they're on rails and I, I guess you will pick one up and it'll slide along store it down here you'll pick the next one up it'll store it where number two is and then number three as i say they are th they're three 32 seu containers Right now, you can't get inside them. Again, the cargo refactor will bring this whole change up. It's going to be a massive change for Star Citizen is this cargo refactor, which will allow you to access the internals of these. Stack, I suppose, manually, I'm assuming, 32 SEU into this. Now, the ship, do, you can still use, I assume. I haven't tried it yet. We'll try it out um, maybe sometime on stream. You'll be able to use it still for its cargo uh, capabilities. So... You'll have 32 SEU, uh, 60, 96 SEU, and you could probably go and fill it up at a commodity terminal. Like you can do with every other ship, the 96 SEU should be accessible. You're just not able to manually load or unload these containers and decide how much you have on. It'll just be faked in a way, but still usable. Let's get out of here. Really nice view out the back, actually, where you can see the engines and the crane and, and all the containers. I do like that. Right. We also have the door panels and the lighting states. Is that emergency? Yeah. So we've got an emergency lighting state here where the light's actually missing. Anyway, that's doing what it's doing. I won't go down there just yet, but you've got a, a quick hatch down to the, the next floor below. Here you can see the, the jump drive, which is there. Is that the quantum drive? Maybe it's the both, but we just don't have a jump drive module yet. It could be both of them. It could just be the uh, jump drive. Here you've got shield generators and power plants. So you've got two of these actually each. It does state on the information that there's, there's one shield generator, but there's definitely two located in the ship so it's got two power plants two coolers two shield generators two computers one radar amongst other things that are just not physicalized so that's one juno starworks and two juno starworks power plants you've got the two are they facility no i don't know what they are two shield generators are located here we have two coolers one and two again juno starworks side mounted these, these ones. I'm not sure what these are. If they are anything just yet. I don't think they are. They're not computers anyway because they're further down here. But as you come back here, you've got your engine. Or your engines. A little control panel here which will allow you to get information about how smooth the ship is running. I do like the engineering segments in uh, our those ships. Really liked the mole engineering location. That was cool as well. Can't access them at the moment. Uh, but this is where the battery is going to be located the scanner I'm not sure if anything else is going to be there but because we don't have those physical yet we can't use them 
this is the avionics so your computer where you'll be able to slide in it looks like you're going to be able to put four blades or up to four blades but obviously this is not fleshed out yet so i wouldn't take that as a as a gospel answer yet we will, we'll wait and see once they get that blade gameplay in but very nice for the engineer to deal with nice little location you've got so the best this is where the second player will probably spend a bit of time um coming and using the tractor beam or the crane dealing with the uh engineering side of things fixing things up replacing components that kind of stuff now the lower deck is the habitation area it is also where you access the bridge which is nice we'll just take a quick peek and then we'll sit in it later so that's the pilot seat this is the support station the co-pilot station he's got a decent amount of um controls or views or what do you call them mfds don't think anything back here is functional yet or even intended to be functional i'm not too sure how that's going to play out i won't lock the door i i again i tried to record this earlier locked myself in the cockpit which was not fun had to respawn <laughs> so this is the airlock oh it's a nightmare um here we have the docking collar which we were looking at on the outside great to see that you have the full airlock capabilities where you can come in this way walk on and off it's not like a, a top down airlock where you're gonna have to uh, watch my nose go up and down in a ladder it is straight in walking in you can it's a bit sort of um ages with these padding very much like the reclaimer and then you can vent the airlock and you get in and it's all safe as we've just come from the lift back there now this is where the magic happens this is the uh, habitation area we won't go in there yet but that is where you've got your lockers and armory and things so you do have seu storage here you have uh, 15,000 or 1500 personal seu uh, I can't remember how that translates. So quite a lot of room for putting your, your gear in. Obviously, these will be the physical accessible locations that will open up the door. You will be able to physically put stuff in and out, as well as have UI um, options. This is where your dining table is. Again, a nice view out the back, although it's kind of weird because it's blocked by the container so you're not going to see much anyway at least you can check to see if you remember to pick up the cargo a ue marine history always forward i think that was actually one of the law posts i can't remember anyway there's a chow line here you've got all the different food it's exactly the same by the looks of things as the mole it is obviously argo standard but you'll have all your food drink accessible in this location straws or strawberry licorice i'm not sure little tv there so you can watch the murray cup or the latest news reports two beds which they did say also double up as escape pods which is uh, very useful so if you know shit hits the fan you can get out of there and then through here is where you have the armory and all the storage areas now what's nice is you do have two lockers you have uh, one here. So you've got two each. So you can use them for whatever you want. You could have an external suit, internal suit, civvies, depending on what you're doing. You've got the toilet over here. It's frosted unless you get... Only when you get close to it. This is where the sink is. Boop. Very fancy. This is where your bog is. Boop. Not so fancy. Uh, and this is where there's some storage. Empty string. don't think you can sit on it yet oh no that's what i was putting away it's just they're all empty strings so uh that is your toilet area so it's frosted there but if you back up you can literally see them clearly having a shite anyway well uh, i'm sure they'll address that at a later date so that's four lockers again for whatever you need You've got an armory here. I did actually put a weapon in here, but I've claimed the ship that many times through bugs that it's um, it's irrelevant now. And then this is the ladder that goes up to the second floor. Or the top floor. Where you can access the, um, the turret. 
not the turret, sorry, the, uh, the the tractor beam. So if you've got a second player who's not in the cockpit with you, you you know, you're he's maybe just having a coffee on the table. We're going back up again. You can ask him to go here and he doesn't have to take the elevator. And also, if you lose power, you're not restricted with um, not being able to access the tractor beam station. Or, well, each floor. Don't know how you'd get out of the ship, though. So yeah, that's the internal. It's it's a pretty nice. I really like this ship. It it really speaks to me in terms of its aesthetic, with it being Argo. It's such a cool looking um, design. I've always been a fan of Argo's designs. And again, it follows suit with the mole, with the uh, MPUV and everything else. But this is the cockpit. Not a bad view. It's industrial view, very much like the other Argo ships. Um, yeah, it's nice. There's a lot of controls dotted around. Not so much up there, though. Not yet, anyway. But here you've got your quantum information. Just slowly hooking the buttons up. Quantum drive is there. Landing gear. Cruise control, flight assist. G-safe. Probably yeah, coupled IFCS and so forth. ESP. Exit, open and close exterior, power on and off down there, and then I think there's a couple, oh no, there's nothing around here, is there? So you've got everything quite close to hand. Let's just give it a little jiggle. Sounds pretty nice. Now it does come with a remote turret. Let me just go and sit in that seat and I'll show you how that works. With two size three energy repeaters on the top. It also does have hard points for two size one pilot controlled weapons, which are actually, hang on. They're located down, oh Christ, hang on. Underneath the cockpit. Those two little orange areas down there underneath the cockpit are where you'll hook up two size one weapons which is you know they don't come as standard it's not the most offensive of ships as you can imagine it's a cargo hauler from argo it's not a fighter in any way that is where the, t the turret is the remote turret with its two size three weapons which is not too bad they've got bearing repeaters on at the moment not too bad having um size three on and they are remote turret operated i'm sure you can slave them to um with a you know like an ai blade or whatever uh, but apparently it has quite strong armor, which is where it stands out. It'll be able to take a beating. Um, again, it looks like it's got two shields. It, although it states that it doesn't, it only has one. I'm pretty certain it has two shields. So strong armor, but when physicalized armor comes along, it should be capable of, capable of at least fending off any attackers, even if it can shoot so much. Um, it won't, you won't want to stand and fight. So you can take a beating while you're getting out of there. Let's just try and get into this. I've not used this yet, so we'll see how it goes. Do we need to power it on first? I don't think we do, do we? Yes, we do. There we go. Weapons on. Systems activated. Systems on. Size three, enough to put off someone who's coming in for an attack. And you do have, its own, it does have its own power. So as you can see, there is quite a lot of um, energy ammunition. And it regenerates pretty fast as well because it's its own power supply by the sounds of things. So yeah, you're not going to be completely, you know, ass in hand, worried about being attacked. You can you can at least fend them off while you're making a run for it. And let's just power that off. Get out. Now it's supposed to be more of a, a freelancer competitor, um, which I think the freelancer does that have a was it 66, I believe, but also a crew of four. So when you think about it, you are splitting those profits. 
uh, it is more offensively op uh, more offensive is the the freelancer series so there is that where if you are going to somewhere where it's a bit more dangerous you should be a little bit more well off with a freelancer because you've got more powerful weapons another turret as well uh, but again you are splitting those profits so maybe if you get damage pay or danger pay you can at least make some money there with the freelancer whereas this is more for your local runs long distance runs um safer places i'm sure it can fend for itself and take a beating but yeah i do wonder how it'll compare to the whole b as well because that has 384 seu uh so quite a lot more than the raft but again it'll be less armored it probably won't have as much firepower either it's, it's hard to say until we actually see the whole b in game but that is more of your trade lane shipping ships this is one of those that could go into dangerous areas fend for itself but not really you don't want to be standing and fighting so yeah we'll see how that flows let me just take it for a quick spin it is a very nice ship um style wise especially are we powered on did i no we're not powered on that's why i'm not taking it Let's take her let me just make sure i don't know where the uh, sem speed is it doesn't have a marker on here if you look just here i think it's there unfortunately with argo's color scheme for their hood it blends too well so let's just go up look at those thrusters boosting up and down That is the landing gear coming up and down for big legs, like I say, very bulldog looking. And up she goes. Beautiful. Very nice smooth action. And you can see all the maneuvering thrusters sort of dotted around. They are very big so it's quite it's, it's relatively maneuverable for the size those four little stampy bits on the front here that is apparently just the rule of cool uh, according to the q a there is nothing really to them um for the sake of you know like uh, when you dock or anything whether there's anything to them later on i don't know but no it's a nice ship hang on i need to get my joysticks set up properly there we go and I really look forward to doing some cargo missions, especially when the cargo refactor is done and the economy is more updated. I mean, when I said it was maneuverable, quite maneuverable, I was lying. It is very slow to maneuver. Like, if I do a full roll, it takes about half a day. It's like, it's like flying a canal boat. But still, I don't expect it to be maneuverable because it is a freight ship. It is a, a bit of a freight through through a bread. There's no, you know, there's nothing else to it. It's you're delivering 96 SEU. Uh, what I would like to know though is whether it's going to be usable to um, extract or load these 32 SEU containers onto uh, the Hull C. I do wonder if that is part of the plan or if it's um, still just the SRV that's going to be doing that. So when a Hull C or a, a ship like that comes into dock, maybe this will be one that you could use to transport three of those 32 containers up to it, equip it to the actual ship, rather than a, an SRV just doing it with single, single boxes each time. That is something I would like to know. It's 50-50 with me at the moment. But anyway, this is the first look at the Argo Raft. As I say, on stream on uh, Tuesday, no stream this Monday, unfortunately, uh, but a stream on Tuesday, we will be checking this out more. 
seeing how useful it is, seeing if we can do some proper cargo missions with it, or not cargo, but commodity trading, as it should still have its 96 SEU usable, just not physical yet. So you should be able to go up to a kiosk. But yeah, I do like it. It is uh, going to be useful for the org just for quick supplies or resupplies of, of whatever we need, wherever we need it. Nice to have a crew of two so you and a friend can just get on with doing some missions, some cargo missions together. And yeah, very nice living quarters. Anyway, I will leave it there for the video. But if you do want to see more of this ship in action, then do head over to twitch.tv forward slash Ryan. As I say, we'll be putting it through its paces. 96 SEU with the current commodity trading is probably going to be difficult because I don't think there's a lot of commodities to deal right now. The, the values are changing quite drastically. I think we might be on a tree. Yes, we are. That was fully intentional just to check its armor capabilities. It seems to have passed the test. Okay, that's a little better. But there you have it. The Argo Raft, the latest ship from Argo. Very nicely complements the the, uh, the mole. And I am very happy to own one for 30, 30 UEC. For, for 30 UEC. For 30 quid. Anyway, do let me know your thoughts. Whether you own one, whether you plan on owning one, whether you hate it or, you, uh, or it takes your fancy. Uh, do hit that subscribe button if you don't mind, uh, if you want to see more Star Citizen. We have just started the Zero to Hero playthrough, which I am thoroughly loving, and that will continue on until we get wiped, I guess, and then we'll start again. Uh, but yeah, as I say, come and follow me over on Twitch if you want to check out this ship anymore. And if you have any questions, that's the best place to ask them. Anyway, hit the thumbs up if you don't mind. It does the channel a big favor. Tick that notification bell if you would like to be notified when my videos go live. Again, thank you so much to my patrons and channel members for your support. It is truly appreciated. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.